I've never had two walls, you know, coming together, bookending, and where you're sort of compressed in between these things. It's like, <laughs> it, it is a pressure cooker, you know? And I think it's the perfect timing for something like this because the idea that you can have uh, iterations of types of work, uh, how they influence like the next body of work, always important to sort of have uh, the challenges in the Carter is that. Grew up in a project bridge for Connecticut. Uh, the, the dump was actually our, it was our backyard. It was like a landfill. So that landfill became kind of like a place where I would like collect material and things and create based on, you know, what was around me. Uh, I don't use found objects in my work, but those very things were inform how I see things, you know. Uh, that landfill, you know, that dump was the, the beginnings of like, okay, probably my building my voice. DC Comics, Marvel Comics approached me back in maybe mid 70s to work with them. And uh, I thought that was what art was. I mean, I was, I mean, I had facility. I could draw and I could paint. And obviously if those guys were on me, it was like I can actually illustrate. What happened thereafter was that um, I saw Jackson Pollock's work in a book and it was like, what is this, you know? And that was, that's fine art. It's, it's, it gets past the prettified surface and actually at something else, you know? And I felt like, I need to sort of go in this direction. I see you have facility, but you're not necessarily, you know, getting past this, this prettified surface. Uh, tie your hands, so let's figure out how to sort of like, say, okay, no more drawing, no more painting, all the things that came easy, and say, okay, you need not to be doing this anymore. From that point, it was like, um, it was like the whole lid was just blown off. And it was like, okay, this is something that you absolutely have to sort of like, you know, be a part of. So abstraction is it. I think that is all using the state of like, actually when you look at the work, you believe that the uh, objects are found. They're not found, they're fabricated in the studio, painstakingly made in the studio. So uh, I have to become the weather in order to transform these things so that they become what they are. Uh, I have to go through the process, uh, you know, and uh, through that, uh, there is a, you know, a weight of existence in each one of these components, you know. Uh, they've been through something. A lot of this is actually made up of remnants of those works trying to achieve that, you know, or works that thought they were actually being finished and in the end inevitably became a part of <laughs> you know, this monstrosity. So, and it's a part of a continuum making works like this because no matter what materials I'm working in, it starts off as an experiment. Those experiments lead to, you know, other ideas and then they expand into, but sometimes not complete, but when they're not complete, they become complete once they're sort of in conversation with each other. This piece is about that. There's history here, you know? So you need to sort of be aware of that. I don't think you just come in willy-nilly and just sort of like say, I'm gonna knock out this piece in this particular museum. No, you have to know something about the museum and the gravitas of, of the space. And you have to meet that. Interesting that a lot of artists will always say, you know, we don't allow, they don't allow the space to sort of dictate you know, where the work goes, but how do you actually make work then if there is not like borders, parameters, you know, things that sort of like in, in, indeed frame the work. You should be conscious of your surroundings so that you can actually arrive at the right tone, you know? So these things are actually, it's almost, it's, it is music, it's melodic. That's my take, my perspective, but these works are numbered for a reason. They should become like a mirror. You shouldn't have to go through me in order to sort of find meaning in the work, you know? I think the full-on experience is, is, is viewer complicit in completing the work. This is full-on. They should embrace it, come away with hopefully something. And you just have to sort of have the right language, the right attitude, and the right approach so that they sort of feel that they are a part of, you know? And that's usually consistently the most beautiful experience. It's actually watching that happen, that transformation. But it's always beautiful in the end.